Hello scholars, thanks for tuning in. I'd like to do a little review of the FET Circuit Lab. And as I'm doing this, uh, if you realize that there are some things you need to change about your lab, you should do that. And if your lab has been turned in today, you can make some changes to it when you come into class. So let's take a look carefully at a series circuit to start off with. We have a 20 volt battery and two 10 ohm resistor light bulbs. Let's get the current going by closing the switch. Okay. Now, first of all, I want to take a look at current. We can use our non-contact ammeter. We can see there's one amp of current going out of the battery, one amp going into the battery, <clears throat> one amp going into this light bulb, one amp coming out, <clears throat> one amp going into the next one, one amp coming out. No matter where we measure the current in the circuit, it's always the same, one amp. That's a big, a big conclusion about series circuits. Let's summarize that over here. Series circuits. So the first thing we can say is I going through the battery is equal to I going through resistor 1, which is equal to I current going through resistor 2. Now let's take a look at voltage. With our voltmeter, we can measure the voltage of this battery. We can see that it is a 20 volt battery. If we measure the voltage drop across the light bulbs, we can see it's a total voltage drop of negative 20. The voltage drop across one light across one light bulb is 10 volts. And the voltage drop off the other light bulb is negative 10 volts. So this is another big conclusion, that the total voltage gain in the battery is equal to the total, total voltage drop through the resistors of the circuit. All right, let's summarize that point. Delta V, change in voltage across the battery equals delta V voltage drop across R1 plus delta V the voltage drop across R2 and we should be aware of the fact that these were negative um, voltage drops. So parentheses around these here and we can put a negative uh, in front. This is not a huge point but we'll add it in. Because these two light bulbs are equal to each other in terms of their resistance they have equal voltage drops across them. So it was positive 20 in the battery, negative 10 in, in resistor 1, and negative 10 in resistor 2. Okay, now onto the parallel circuit. So we begin close the switch, get the current flowing. Wow, these light bulbs are a lot brighter. Why is that? Each one has twice as much current going through it as it did before. Because it has, has its own path from the battery. In other words, an electron leaving the battery, um, there's no voltage drop in getting to each each bulb. Um, let's take a look at series, I mean at the uh, current. All right, with our ammeter, we can see there is four amps coming out of this battery, or four amps, we could say, going through the battery. And going through this bulb here, two amps. Going through this bulb here, two amps. So do you see the relationship between four amps coming in and then the electrons hit this junction. Half go to the left, half go up, so we get two amps and two amps. This is a big conclusion about parallel circuits. The total current is equal to the sum of the current in all the branches. So let's summarize it over here. So we have parallel circuits. The current through the battery equals the sum of the current through resistor 1 and resistor 2. Now let's take a look at volt voltage. So we have again a 20 volt battery. We measure the voltage drop across the light bulb. It is negative 20. And if we even remove this light bulb here, or let's just remove this wire going to it. Alright, so now no electricity no current flows through this upper path since it's considered an open circuit. This other one is unaffected. So if the electrons are having a 20 volt, 20 volt gain to the battery, they're going to have a 20 volt drop in this light bulb. And it's going to be just as bright here as it is if we bring this wire back. These electrons don't really care the fact that there's an extra path. One thing about a parallel circuit is these are all independent. And notice how when I remove this bulb, the other one stayed lit. If we measure the voltage 
across this resistor, this light bulb, we can see it's also negative 20 or 19.99 rounded up. So this is the big conclusion about parallel circuits. The voltage drop across all the resistors that are assembled in parallel is the same as the voltage of the battery. Let's summarize that over here. Delta V of the battery equals negative delta V of resistor 1, which equals negative delta V of resistor 2. Take a look at the, uh, the symmetry we got going on here. In a series circuit, we were saying that it's current, which is the same for each resistor. In parallel circuits, we're saying it's the voltage that is the same across each resistor. And let's look for another similarity here. In series circuit, we said that the voltage drop equals the sum, uh, the voltage, sorry, the voltage gain in the battery equals the sum of the voltage drops across the resistor. Whereas for the parallel circuit, it is um, the current that we add together to get the total current to the battery. One thing we can do with this simulation, now that we have it set up, is we can play around with the wire resistivity. As I increase the resistance of the wires, how do you think that will affect the brightness of the bulbs? Let's try it. Uh -huh. Now, why do they get brighter or dimmer? We know that with increased resistance of these wires, we're going to have less current through the circuit. And we can see less current going through the bulbs, so they're not as bright. If we measure the voltage drop across the light bulbs now, it is negative 13.54, whereas before it was negative 20. So these electrons are losing voltage, losing potential, just in traveling through the wire. In fact, if I measure the voltage difference between electrons that are recently coming out of the battery and those that are getting ready to enter the bulb, they've already experienced a negative 3.24 voltage drop. One other thing we can do, just for kicks here, is let's try shorting out. Um, let's try shorting out these bulbs. So I'm going to add in a short. I'm going to go from this junction over to this junction. What do you think is going to happen when I connect these two together? If you're an electron, which path would you take? Notice that the electrons as it is are taking each of these paths equally because they both have the same resistance. Um, before I make the short, let's just adjust the resistance of this one here. As I increase its resistance, do you think it's going to get brighter or dimmer? Let's try it. I've increased the resistance to 36 point, there we go, to 40 ohms. So were you right that there's less current going through it? Less, um, more resistance, less current. This is Ohm's law. Current and resistance are inversely proportional to each other. And if I make this resistance have twice the resistance of the other bulb, so I'll make this one 20 ohms and the other one is 10. If I go in and measure current, the current through this one here is 1.39. Well, let's just say here 1. Point, yeah, 1.39. And the current through this one is 0 0.69. So we are getting literally half the current because we have twice the resistance. Okay, now let's bring back that short. Here we go. Okay, well, at least our, um, our battery didn't catch on fire this time. So apparently these wires have enough resistance that we're not, we're not getting a crazy amount of current going through the battery. As I decrease the resistance of the wire, we can see these electrons starting to pick up their speed. Current is increasing. If I do that even more, oh, uh-oh, bad, danger, battery catching on fire, going to explode, possibly spray acid on our face, metal shrapnel. This can be one danger with batteries. And um, you may have heard people say don't throw a battery into a fire. Uh, this is one of the reasons why, because the um, gas is given off. It can be explosive. They can be giving off hydrogen gas and it can be dangerous. Okay, so um, 
I would like you to be ready to come in and make any changes to the lab so that you can get, um, get a higher score on it. And uh, let me know if you have any questions on this in class tomorrow. All right, scholars, have a great evening.